What's up, everybody? And welcome back to All the Things Sword of Truth, the alcohol fueled chapter by chapter reread of the Sword of Truth series with a forkful of. <laughs> forkful? Yeah. <laughs> it could work. How do you. But it would come out of the, the slots. It's. It's a deep fork. A deep fork. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> you just got to pick your utensil right. <laughs> yeah. I'm Nate. And I'm Jade. And tonight we're going to be talking about Chapter 5 of Stone of Tears. That we are. Real quick, though, before we get into that, we wanted to take a minute and talk about something else. Usually on this podcast, we don't bring up social stuff, or we try not to, because it's a break from the outside world. This is like a little reprieve from all of that crap. Right. Normally. But if you are listening to this currently, there is a lot of things going on. Exactly one week from the day that we are recording this episode, George Floyd was murdered. And since then, there have been riots and protests and a lot of things going on all over the world. We wanted to address it because normally we don't bring that stuff up in order to give everyone a break from it. And this issue in particular, there are people that can't get a break from. It's their everyday life. And at the very least, we wanted to acknowledge that. And bring it up because it's not something that should be hidden away. So with that in mind, we're going to get on with the show. It's hard for us to talk about that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit hard for us to segue into a chapter after bringing up such a such a big thing. But I didn't want to ignore it. <laughs> so it's best not to. <laughs> so this chapter starts with a woman named Sister Margaret. We are in a totally different place than the place that we left the last time. Which was that getting his freak out, if you remember. Almost. He hadn't quite gotten there yet. <laughs> he was heading there, though. We know what happened. <laughs> well, he did have an address. <laughs> so Margaret is giving a blessing to somebody, calling them the creator's child. Super dramatic like. <laughs> We're at a cult. Cool. <laughs> All the information you need. <laughs> <laughs> That's what kind of a place we're in. And as she reaches the top of this rampart, there's a swordsman. That's okay. Rampart's a weird word. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a swordsman. <laughs> <laughs> a swordsman on the rampart. We are definitely in like castle territory here. This is right where you want to be. Yeah. Well, she's she's headed towards the rampart and he's off a ways and he actually comes running in to her. Oh, yes. But yes, they, yes. they meet kind of what I imagine to be at the top of this rampart heading down. So I'm clear. And maybe this is a dumb question. Is the rampart the part with, like, the little squarey dudes that are cut out? I think so. Like, top of building, you know? Let's let's Google that. We're going to Google this. We got to Google it. Because I'm picturing, like, the place that people stand at the top of the castle, right? Honestly, I thought the rampart was, like, the drawbridge. Yeah, I found it. Defensive wall of a castle or walled city. Oh, okay. Having a broad top with a walkway and typically a stone parapet. That's a rampart. Yeah, it's the thing that the archers stand on top of and, like, shoot off the, you know what I mean? Shoot off their arrows? You mean, like, in the movies? Yeah. That's what you're talking about, the square cut wall with the with the guys with the bows and arrows Classic shooting out of the slots castle underneath. Scenario. Yeah, yeah, that's the rampart. <laughs> the big, I... cool-looking thing on <laughs> yeah. the Disney castle, that's where yeah. they're at. Yeah, just so we're all, like, setting the scene correctly. <laughs> This isn't a different part of a castle I didn't know about. It's not like the toilet or something. It's it's the cool part. You know what it is. You just <laughs> don't know what it is. So he's one of three different swordsmen, but he's the only one that she can, like, see at this point. And they have a prisoner, like, down a ways? Yeah, down... I, what it is, I believe, is that they're on this rampart, right? <laughs> she has to go down to the bottom level of this rampart. Mm. Okay, so that's where the other two guys are. These guys together are holding a prisoner behind the door. Now, the whole the whole thing in this chapter is that the swordsmen are they're not allowed to repeat anything this prisoner says. And that is on penalty of death. So she's like, what the fuck do you need? Okay, obviously, the sister Margaret had been called. And this guy just goes. Blah, 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 as fast as he can. And he almost says exactly what it is the prisoner said. Like four times. Yeah, like <laughs> right away. And I know that this is in there just so Terry could go, 
by the way, these are the rules considering this prisoner. Yeah. Just so that there was a way that we could all be clued in as to the rules here. But yeah, it, it blows my mind that the first person who is in charge of this prisoner spills his guts <laughs> immediately. And is like, oh, yeah, I'm bad at my job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's super thrilled to be, like, moved to a different position. Yeah, he gets fired immediately, and he's like, fuck yeah. Cool. Don't want to be doing this shit. <laughs> Which does make me wonder what exactly he was hearing being shouted out. I mean, I know we're not there yet to what the prophecy said, but I, I am curious because it never fully tells us if he was actually screaming out what we hear later in the chapter, or if he was just yelling out random ass profane stuff <laughs> <laughs> well by the way this guy is freaked out i imagine it was like he was speaking in tongues yeah. and he got really scared because it didn't sound normal but I, I mean later in the chapter we know he he's just a regular not he's okay let me <laughs> backtrack <laughs> he's not just a regular guy but he's just like a regular dude he doesn't have like this weird demon voice or something he just he sounds like a regular man right so it must have been that he was just saying some heinous shit yeah and the guard was not prepared to hear it yeah but there again he's not supposed to repeat anything yeah it shouldn't matter margaret <laughs> effectively fires his ass and he's supposed to report to his superior officer and be reassigned. Mm -hmm. So Sister Margaret gets down to the two guys at the bottom. And she's like, what about you two? Have you guys heard anything? Did you hear any noises? <laughs> and they're like, noise? What noise? One guy's spitting like he's hardly even paying attention. Like, no, I ain't heard shit all night. And I got a real mobster feel off of these two. Like, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. And my body language is indicating I know exactly what it is you're talking about. But I'm not talking. Yeah. Well, and especially because she keeps mentioning the other guy. She's like, yeah, well, he said. And they were like, yeah, what did he say? You want me to go talk to him? I'll go fucking talk to him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They want him to take a nice oath. Yeah. They're super upset that she's just going to take his oath and reassign him. After, like, yeah, he's never going to say anything. Totally fine. They're like, uh, no, we should take care of that. Cut his tongue out. It'll be fine. And they're going to go check the other people, too, to make sure nobody else heard shit. Because they're like, mm, this is their job. <laughs> well, it implies that these two understand that the prisoner, whatever it is he's saying, can't get out to the public. And that this guy who was up top is like the newbie. He's real green and doesn't mm -hmm. really get the way it's supposed to work yet. So he fucks up and these two know why. Yeah. But that's also probably why they are closer to the prisoner because they can handle the shit. And they've probably been there for a minute. They just bang on the door and tell him to shut up. But they're like, we've talked about in this book already, like the, the soldiers who like care about their duty for a reason. They... I mean, maybe they don't have a lot of, like, pride in their in their work, but they obviously believe in the oath that they took to not fucking say anything. Right. And it doesn't matter if Sister Margaret is cool with it or not. This is our fucking job. Well, you got to look at it like this. They made an oath, and if they are holding that oath true, then anybody else that made that oath with them that decided to break it, is a piece of shit because, hey, we made this together on penalty of death, on penalty of death, and you just got out of it. Like like the Night's Watch? Yeah, exactly like the Night's Watch. <laughs> yes. You're going to take the black and sit on that fucking wall, son, and you ain't going to say <laughs> shit, okay? <laughs> That's going to be it. <laughs> and it is it's just like a prison up there, too. Yeah. Now, But the thing we, we learn here is that this prisoner, his jail cell, is fucking awesome. It turns out to be a spacious apartment with carpets, tapestries, which are like wall hangings. I learned a word today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's very well lit, and there's tons of books, like bookshelves everywhere, even though the books that are supposed to be on them are just all over the fucking place. It sounds like a Swedish jail cell. Very, very posh. <laughs> very nice. Yeah. I've actually never looked into the jail in Sweden. Are you planning something that I don't know about? No. <laughs> Do you have a passport? 
I think it expires this year. Oof. Okay. Well, <clears throat> there's not much time. Never mind. We 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 have a thing we're doing. Oh. Mm-hmm. We'll talk <laughs> later. We'll talk later. It sounds pretty nice. <laughs> Will you go to prison with me, Jade? Yeah. I'll go with you. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> so before Sister Margaret goes into the room, she finds the wizard web that's around his room that is what he's not supposed to be able to talk through. And she finds a little like thread that he picked at to be able to like yell through the wizard's web. So you're talking about a magic lock yeah. on a door. Yeah. That she can apparently fix at any time by just like massaging it back together. And he's been fucking with. Yeah. Like with, you know, you get your little plastic shiv and you can carve the wall very very slowly that's what he's doing but it's the magic equivalent yeah he's picking his way out of there god damn it yeah and he he got it just far enough open to yell out and he chose to yell tonight i just thought it was interesting because we were kind of talking about it earlier these guys haven't heard him yell very often or at least a new guy had never heard him yell before because that that's another like layer to that so not only is this guy all of a sudden yelling scary shit, but he's not, I'm not even supposed to fucking hear him. Maybe he didn't even know there was a real prisoner down there. Maybe he <laughs> found that out after he started yelling. The guy's down the hall. He was like, what is that? He was like, don't worry about it. And he was like, wait, no, there's a person behind that door. And those guys were like, you don't fucking hear shit. All I can picture is those videos on YouTube where the people think they're alone and then there's a prankster <laughs> with a camera hiding around a corner and they scream at the top of their lungs. <laughs> <laughs> Shit goes flying. People cry. <laughs> people fall over. It's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that guy probably shit his pants. Yeah. And that's why he was running away when Sister Margaret was on her way down. Right. It all makes sense right. now. No, I... Okay, I just said that he, he maybe he didn't even know it. We know he knows that Nathan is in there, but I think it's funny that he may not have known that he had the ability to pick a hole in that and yell at some time. So yeah. Ah! Jump scare. <laughs> it's got to be that way. <laughs> and also, I just, I mean, we can't pass it and not just acknowledge his name is Nathan. So he's got an awesome name. Check. Yep. I love me and Nathan. And uh, apparently, he's a handsome motherfucker. Check. (laughs) He's a prophet. Okay, no check there. Yeah, no check there. (laughs) And he's an old one. That was the other thing that she mentioned right away. He's he's pretty fucking old. I'm not old. But he's handsome. This is another, like, older man. Okay, so half point for handsome. We're at two and a half out of four. (laughs) This is fine. We're good. Everything's turning up, okay? We're good. (laughs) We also find out he's batshit crazy. Ah, and there's the third check. Yeah, okay. now it all circles round. <laughs> Back in business. <laughs> Still good looking, though. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that makes sense, because all Nathans I know are super attractive. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Handsome motherfuckers. So at first, when Sister Margaret comes into the room, Nathan's like, where the fuck is the prelate? And she's like, um, I'm here, so don't worry about her. She's sleeping. You don't need to bother her. And he, like, is adamant for a couple minutes, like, hey, I asked for her. I don't want you. I want her. Eventually, he calms down, but it's probably more uncomfortable than it seemed in the book, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, it's awkward right off the bat, and she's got to, like, settle him down. And apparently, she's there to hear him say something. So she's got to, like, calm him down and then kind of pander to him just a little bit because she needs him to say something whatever it was that the guards aren't supposed to repeat he can now say to her safely and he tries to say i don't actually have a prophecy and she's like oh you just called me down here for company which immediately i would have been like bullshit because you're you were just super pissed that the prelate's not here and you wouldn't have done that whole shit if you didn't actually have a reason i was gonna say no i was asking for somebody else you showed up (laughs) (laughs) yeah no i did not call you for company right i didn't call you for shit (laughs) if i wanted company from anybody it was somebody else (laughs) that guy should not be in trouble for repeating stuff because i specifically asked for the prelate and you are not her (laughs) Hmm. Mm. (laughs) but while you're here yeah i mean how you doing (laughs) 